Greetings and welcome to a Center for Enlightenment production brought to you by Matholomew, an organization or group of people spread like the internet, distributing information about history, reality, and front groups like the Skull and Bone Society, who's infiltrated the CIA, and that's why the CIA really can't be trusted. I don't know if other groups like the Scroll and Key of Yale also have infiltrated the FBI or not, but they definitely seem to be <clears throat> blowing it big time. Let's see some major improvements. All right, next slide. From Egypt to Israel, the legacy of psilocybin, the quest for the tree of life. We're going wherever we have to go to find that tree. The cosmic fall. In the beginning, man made Adam and Eve, whether that's hunter and gatherer or just Adam and Eve. Uh, it's not a situation where you go to hell if you believe one or the other. Some people will say that you, <clears throat> you would be in risk of hellfire, but I do not believe that. So here we go, the Amanita muscaria. Um, I'll ignore that call. The Amanita muscaria as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Here you see Adam and Eve gathered before the serpent with an offering of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That being the bright red fruit or Satan's fruit. It uh, calls his name. <clears throat> so it's believed that humankind, uh, Adam and Eve, or hunter and gatherer, ate this tree and then uh, fell. And they beget two I don't care if that was an emergency. <clears throat> they beget two children, Seth and Cain. Abel was born first, but Abel was killed by agriculturalists. So pastoralists was wiped out. We don't know why. Now the reason it seems to be that the agriculturalists um, killed them off. Uh, yeah, so that's our history. Now there are going to be four players in this uh, session tonight. The Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil, Amanita Muscaria, depicted here. The Serpent, so that's Satan's name. That's his, that's his formal name, if you will. That calls his presence. This is Lucifer, uh, the five-pointed star, the pentagram, the, the it's a serpent vine that uh, has been used for thousands of years under the titles of Kokol Khan, the feathered serpent, the lightning serpent among the Aztecs, <clears throat> and um, used in the tradition of Brahmanism in the East when the conch shell was heavily used as a symbol, because that's the symbol for the morning glory. If you cross-section a conch shell, you get a spiral. Also, where goddess worship got its spiral. So, Adam and Eve um, are also involved here. And, of course, the tree of life, psilocybin. The glory of the morning, <clears throat> LSD, lysergic acid dithylamide number 25, is from the ergot plant. Technically, that angel's name is Apollyon, the destroyer from the abyss. And LSA, which is in the morning glory, is just Lucifer's name. So you can see two wrongs don't make a right. Qualities of the great serpent, the biblical names, the serpent, Satan, the worm, the dragon, the glory of the morning. These are all names for Lucifer. And Satan. So there's the devil is the amalgam, one horn, Lucifer, the other horn, Satan. It's the twin star uh, Cirrus A and Cirrus B, also known in the Harry Potter series referentially as C Cirrus Black, the big black dog star. 
Uh, the morning glory used among the Olmecs. Here you see a priest sitting inside of a serpent, a spirit of a serpent or a very large snake. And he is uh, got a basket with the XX of the morning glory seeds. This is his basket. So this guy is shamanizing with the serpent plant. Not saying it's not possible. You just have to have a big heart if you're going to go that direction. Stanislav Grof is a good example. Um, specifically, if you take LSD or LSA, you have to have a big heart or it turns you. From a sheep into a goat? Yeah, that's right. Alright, so these are the Morning Glory Seed Crushers. They were found in the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. The Feathered Serpent is one of the largest uh, temple is in one of the largest cities of Mesoamerican history, Tihuacan. And that city had two other temples. One was dedicated to the sun, which happened to be painted all red with white spots. And um, so I don't know if they actually had the white spots on it, but it was all red. And uh, it's believed it was a Manita Muscaria that was the, the worship sacrament for that temple. And they did one for the moon, which is the Silsibes, Christ's name, God's name. And uh, that's why in East India they, they say the, the sun was begotten of the moon. So they're saying Silsibin was before Amanita Muscaria, spiritually speaking. The Maya. Um, they would worship the morning glory and they would cut their tongue or pierce themselves somewhere and take the blood and put the blood as a sacrifice onto pieces of paper. So you can see she's holding pieces of paper. Uh, forgive Microsoft. <clears throat> and out of this sacrifice of herself, her own flesh on morning glories, this is a symbol for the morning glory, box with the circle in it. Not the circle with the dot in it, but similar. This is the spirit, uh, it's called the spirit serpent. And uh, it was worshipped among the Mayans. Aztecs being shown with the morning glory flower and a hummingbird visiting it. It's also holding the morning glory symbol. This is the uh, tendril of the morning glory, the snake-like portion. Among the Greeks, the morning glory was used and depicted here as a devil. He's got that special supernatural or preternatural ear on his lobe there. And of course, the, uh, the devilishly fashionable goatee. This is Asbestos. He was, uh, to the biblically speaking, he was Cain or Tubal Cain. Um, and so he was the god of the forge. Our, our ancestors made deities of their ancestors. That's what Plato said. You know, they are our gods. They, they are our lieges, and they are our ancestors. It's a great admission. Very powerful. Uh, morning glory here. Dot, 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 dot. Remember those little dots. Can also be expressed this way. All right. Satan's name. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why we were told not to eat it. Eat of it. Well, it's basically don't go over to Satan. That's the one thing I don't want you to do. And we didn't just eat this amount to muscaria one time. We ate it as a culture for a long time. And we fell. And here we are in Ego Land. Tree of Knowledge among the Maya. It was known as the Evil Mushroom. That's, uh, that's the name they had for the Amanita Muscaria. So they remembered it clearly as the Evil Mushroom. Um, I've got uh, an artist who renders me pieces of artwork um, more carefully than anybody else I could find. 
And so uh, this Amanita muscaria is shown here also has a frog in the branch. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that, but I hope you can. Frogs are symbolic. Of course, it gives a real literal size of the actual tree that it would be like about that big compared to a frog. Uh, so the artist knew what he was doing there. This is the fruit being offered, but the other end, the tail end, also seems to have like a viper-like head, a two-headed serpent. See, you can almost see the eye there and the, and the head there. I'll move the mouse off so you can see it better. All right, another thing you should notice is this branch here. This branch just comes off at the base of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, so you can't even tell if it's the same tree. And it goes down into the ground, and it makes a rock formation on which she's standing. So she's standing on the rock. And here, if you were to turn out the lights in the auditorium, I'm just kidding, uh, this would glow. These are glow-in-the-dark mushrooms. All right. The headdress is that of Amanta muscaria. The, the actual rock was originally red painted. This is a Neanderthal man also was part of the fall and he also ate of the Amanita muscaria which could be the beginning of the giants. We don't know. But giants are like kangaroos, you know. Were they on the ark or not? We don't know. But it was a really big flood because there's a boat on top of a mountain and it's the size of a football field. The Ark has been found. All right, so this is the morning glory sign. Notice the spiral-like twisting and the spiral-like twisting of the goddess symbol. This just goes back to uh, in Neanderthal who had a bigger brain capacity. It went back to nature worship, almost uh, Gaia in, in fashion. Here we have the um, the Amanta Muscaria goddess, the Venus of Willendorf, as well as another Venus symbol. And in the back of it, you can see clearly they're showing the fly or the fly agaric Amanta Muscaria. All right. Now, you know, if you're going to talk about the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you want to talk about the tree of life. This is the hollow stem of the tree of life. It's hollow be thy stem. <laughs> you can take my pun. This is a scarlet cap. The caps turn scarlet when they get enough sunlight, but otherwise they have kind of a golden hue. This one, if it were perfectly colored, you could see the purple around the rim. Um, there is a reason that it's purple around the rim is the spores. But also, if you were to check the um, male uh, phallus, the male member, it's been cut so it had a veil and the veil was cut away and it was stitched back together again and there's a purple rim where there are stitch lines and that was the first covenant to remind us of his name all right so here's another Hamas showing the name the hand of God and in it the psilocybin mushroom clearly portrayed as the capstone with a little heart from the artist. Discovery of Noah's Ark. I mentioned that already. Almost no big deal now. The flood surely happened. We haven't really got evidence of the giant's bones yet, but personally, I think that the, the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, was probably built by in the, with the help of giants. You know, just give them a pile of psilocybin mushrooms and when they're done puking just help, ask them to help you build a pyramid these are the size Noah himself was nine feet tall uh, according to the bones at the uh, Ron Wyatt archaeological museum so Ron found this anchor stone there were eight of these they kept the boat from tipping over you can see the size of them I mean just to move that as a man It'd just really be amazing. There's the actual boat. 
Are you trying to see the boat? Okay, this is the one rim on the right, and it comes back down on the left. And if you're trying to see the original boat, I think it looked something like this. Uh, this is radar scanning that they've done. And it's about the size of a football field, so you had room for all those animals. After that flood, we came down to Noah's descendants, Ham and Japheth and Shem. And they, um, they basically had peoples, and had, some of the peoples went bad. One of them was Nimrod, and he had, uh, who was Hercules among the Greeks. Although, you know, they mythologicalized a lot of the, the material. But what we do know is they were building a tower together with the help of psilocybin mushrooms. They were microdosing like Silicon Valley. Uh, but um, instead of building programs and software, they were building a tower. And God came down and confused the language. So a deeper look into the art history, an example of the poppy. The poppy here is the opium poppy. And its symbolism is the cobra. Here you can see the cobra's hood in the flower petal. This is part of why it's given the symbolism of a cobra, because the body of this, this plant, related to serpent plant, but not... Uh, so angel's name, Gabriel, related to Lucifer, but not actually a kin. Um, although the opioid crisis would make you think otherwise. Luke, the Gospel of Luke has this hope for us, this promise. It says, I will not allow you to become bitten by serpents, that, that his disciples won't be subject to the laws of addiction. Not that you should, you know, risk it, per se, but, um, you know, we do have an immunity. Cobra was displayed in Roman and Greek art as the poppy. The spots here on the cobra are the spots here on the poppy capsule. Fang bite, medicine plant, Greek, Greek medicine, traditionally thought to be bitten by serpents. The acanthia leaf, that's important. That leaf covers over the um, true nature of the poppy. So people go, oh, it's an acanthia leaf. Yeah, they say that about the $20 bill. But this $20 bill is poppy leaves, and at its base is the cobra here. We'll deal more with money and what it means as we go along. Lion in the carpet. You see the lion on the left and the mushroom with the fire around it on the right. Seashell um, lion. Almost said Santa Claus there. This is the opposite of Santa Claus. Lucifer is hiding under, or not Lucifer, Satan hides under Santa Claus. While God's symbolism is the lion. And the seashell there at the nose is the scallop shell. You know, the uh, shell on which Venus arrived, love. So there you see up close, there's the eye. This is the grail cup put in motion, puts the the carpet in motions so a flying carpet comes from here hidden manna this is again the mushrooms hidden in the carpets the artist displays them there this is an Afghan carpet and that's because it's the name of God his holy name not that Jesus is not holy it is certainly holy but uh, and, and devil's answer to that name so you can cast out demons in that name. So it's pretty powerful. We're not talking about the little stuff here. We're talking about Save the Planet stuff. So before the currency, before 9-11, this was the symbolism that the Freemasons put on there, the opium poppy with the uh, cobra. 
After 9-11, we went into Afghanistan, where the major poppy fields are now growing, and took it over. The CIA did this. Oh, we did it as a country, but you take the $20 bill after, and it's wiped clean of the um, opium poppies, which started the Skull and Bone Society, uh, you know, was opium money. Anyway. Uh, if you fold that $20 bill just right, it makes an airplane that shows the two twin towers build, burning. And it was printed before the actual towers burned. So it makes you wonder about, and it also says United and American Airlines on both wings, uh, which are the two airlines that crashed into the twin towers. So it does make you scratch your head, huh? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Bluing pharaohs. Well, we know this is uh, Amun Ra, I believe, and he was a bluing deity with the goat symbol. So they sort of mixed Lucifer. They basically believe that God and Satan were the same. Uh, the goat of Mendes type of philosophy. Head cap. All right, there's the head cap. You notice the eyes in it showing consciousness. This is a wax cap that the Egyptians symbolically put on their heads, and it seemed to represent the, um, the psilocybin cubenesis, or psilocybin mushrooms. This is the tombs. I think we'll, we'll probably wrap for today, and I'll bring this back up tomorrow. Um, the tombs are a good place to close or end things.